Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you couldn't guess, today's video is going to be a bit of an interesting one. As I mentioned in one of my most recent videos, Google has been reaching out to me lately. Somehow I managed to get onto a press review list, which is absolutely awesome. So again, I have to say thanks so much to Google and to Team Pixel, because today we're going to be taking a look at the Pixelbook Go. Now this box is a little thicker than I would estimate a Pixelbook Go should be, so there may be more in here. Let's just open it up and take a look. It's another one of these folding open boxes. Very, very cool. Let's see, we got a card here on top. It says Pixelbook Go Challenge. It's time to start turning your ambition into action with your new Pixelbook Go. So take on the Pixelbook Go Challenge. Select two of the challenges on the back of this card. Tag hashtag Pixelbook Go and poll your audience to see which one they want to see you complete. Within 48 hours following the poll, capture your content using the Pixelbook Go. So that's interesting. I don't know if that's something I'll end up doing, but here are the list of the things. So write something meaningful, work somewhere other than your office. Plan your personal time off with Google Assistant. Perfect your to-do list. Perfect your resume. Find somewhere that requires you to work quietly so you can use the hush keys on the keyboard. Edit your headshot using Adobe Lightroom. Or edit your next five pieces of content. I actually started looking earlier to see if video editing has gotten any better on these type of devices. It looks like Adobe's got a pretty decent offering if it works on this, so that may be something that I look into. Let's see, here is... Well, it looks like there's actually two boxes stacked. So let's open the top one here. We've got a Pixelbook Go user guide. Oh, and then some neat fun toys. This is a, looks like a laptop sleeve and it says Bellroy on it. It's got a magnetic clasp on the top. And just checking very quickly, it appears that this is $50 on Google's website and it comes in two colors. Then there's a backpack. I can never have too many backpacks. <laughs> this is also from Bellroy. It says it's made from recycled plastic bottles. That's very cool. And this says it is the Bellroy Slim Backpack. And checking on the Google site, again, the Google store, this retails for $129. And it's got a pull open latching mechanism. It's magnetic, that's very nice. And it's hard to see, but that's what the inside looks like. It's a slim open sack area. There's a section back here that looks like you can put the laptop in and various and sundry other pockets. If you'd like to see another video, a follow-up video about this backpack, let me know. Maybe do a twofer with the sleeve and the backpack in one video. Living with a Pixel Book Go in its sleeve and backpack. Moving on. So in the bottom section here, this is the Pixelbook Go. And it looks like that's everything, so let's get all this cardboard out of the way. So here is the Pixelbook Go. There's some info on the tech specs. So this has an 8th gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, full HD display, although I believe this can be configured with as low as an Intel M3 and as much as a Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage and a 4K Ultra HD display. So this is a nice middle of the road. The entry price point for this is $649. This is the sort of medium spec one. It's $849 retail. Then there's $999 and $1399. Just depends on how much you want to put into it. Which realistically, a starting point of $649 is a little high for a Chromebook and $849 for one with a Core i5. Again, a little high for a Chromebook. So I have to go into this expecting that it's going to be an amazing experience. So let's see what comes in the box. So this looks like some documentation, getting started, and some stickers. A USB Type-C cable, Type-C to Type-C. A USB-C wall charger, which is 45 watts, but there are a bunch of output options on this. 5, 9, 12, and 15 volts at 3 amps, or 20 volts at 2.25 amps. And then we have the Pixelbook Go. This box is designed very weirdly. I'm just going to mention this quickly. It feels like there should be something under this because this section goes all the way to the bottom of the box. This section does not. Anyway, it does come wrapped in plastic, so we can go ahead and take that off. That's a really neat look. So on the bottom, you've got two large rubber feet that goes across the front and the back. This ridged section, if you can see that, this will probably be very good for heat dissipation. Looks like there's a couple of screws here, Torx screws, probably a couple more under these rubber feet if you wanted to take it apart, but I don't think this is gonna be user serviceable. Feels very solid on the outside. It's like cold aluminum feeling. There's a little indentation here in the front so you can get your finger under it to open it up. Three and a half millimeter headphone jack with what looks like a status LED USB port, another USB-C port on the other side, and again, what looks like a, a status LED. Then we go ahead and open it up, and I have seen a couple of people open these, and they say you can just, yeah, 
just like that, which I hate to say it. Oh, it's already coming up. So there it says Chrome and it is starting up. I was gonna say, I hate to say it. But that's one of the things that I love about a Mac. Again, just taking a second for that. Being able to open the laptop without having to hold on to the base of it is just one of those niceties and this has it. So thumbs up there. So we're ready to get everything signed in. I believe this is a touch screen. So let's go ahead and try that. Yep, there we go. So I can tap on things. I can still use the trackpad if I want to. Get signed on to my Wi-Fi here. Typing experience, just typing those few characters felt comfortable and sounded very quiet. That's kind of the goal, the hush keys, except all the licensing and everything. Now it is checking for updates. And since it is on Wi-Fi now, it should get the time updates and everything. And it says there are updates. Chrome does update pretty frequently, just the browser alone. So I can only assume the OS does. It's been a couple of years since I've looked at a Chrome OS device of any shape or size. So looking forward to checking this out. Just looking at the keyboard layout, because again, been a little while. You do have arrows, you've got your large space bar, speakers here on the sides, escape button, looks like a multi-window button or a switch windows button. This appears to be a full screen button, volume controls, playback controls, power button up here, and these would appear to be brightness controls. Then you also have a Google Assistant button, very nice. And just playing around tapping on the screen, if I tap down here in the corner, you can see the date, time is down here, but again, it's the wrong time. Volume controls, brightness controls, keyboard layout, Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth settings, Things, accessibility and there is a power button there but there's also a shutdown down in this corner it says I have 76% battery left with four hours and six minutes left but I think that's probably not going to be accurate because it's going through the setup process battery life on this is supposed to be excellent I don't have the numbers in front of me let me pull it up yes on Google site they claim it has 12 hours of battery life that's the all-day battery now you're probably not gonna be able to hear it on the camera but I'm hearing a squeaking I've mentioned it before, I have really, really sensitive ears. So much so that a while back I bought a Razer Blade Stealth and because of the coil whine of the CPU, I could hear it. I had to return it because it was squeaking and screeching in my ears. I kind of thought that I heard it for a second there. I'm not hearing anything now, but even when I first picked it up, it was making a sort of a screeching sound. Really hard to hear, but again, I hear it. As I was about to say, it's still doing its updates. It just, the screen turned off, so presumably it's installing the update. Yeah, it's restarting now. Touchpad firmware updating. Do not touch the touchpad. Good to know. But that is one of the things I will mention about this. If you're new to the channel, you may not be aware. I had one of the first Google Chromebooks, the CR48, back when Chrome OS was first announced. I got one free and that was awesome. And I think someone in my family actually still has that. One of my nieces may be using it to write papers for school and such. But the hardware on that CR48 was not great. The specs were not hugely impressive and it just felt very plasticky, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'll put a link to that video down below if you're interested in seeing that original video from like seven years ago or whatever it was. This one, however, feels much more sturdy, much more significant. Like, I don't think that I could bend it in half if I wanted to. I don't want to. But actually at this point, we're ready to sign in and this is gonna take some time because I've started using significantly more complex passwords. I probably ought to have the Pixel down here. It's on the charger upstairs because that's one of the other things I wanted to try out. The Pixel 4 is supposed to be able to unlock this device and I am curious to see how that works. Let me get signed in and we'll see what happens. On the typing experience, again, Excellent, very quiet typing. If you really go at it, you can hear it, but that's not bad. And it says we are signed in, so I can go ahead and accept and continue. Google Play services. So it looks like this is going to work with Android apps. I looked around online and I didn't see much mention of that anywhere, so I was curious. So we'll go ahead and accept all that. It is giving me the option to install a bunch of apps. I think I'm gonna skip that just to see what it's like out of the box. It says you can access your assistant with voice match. Sure, why not? and it can already recognize me because I've used it a bunch. <laughs> Connect to the phone. I can select a device if I want to text from the computer, share my internet connection, and unlock the Chromebook from the phone. As you can see here, it's giving me a list of Android devices, so I can pick the Pixel 4, accept and continue. Howdy, Jordan. Welcome to the Chrome family. This is no ordinary computer. This was designed to deliver the best experience. Take a tour, why not? Get to the apps fast with the app launcher. Check your status, manage connections, updates, and settings with the status tray. Alt, Shift, S to use the keyboard. Boy, that trackpad is very loud when you click. So there's a lot of stuff in here. I'll go through that when I've got time. Listen to the click though. That is, I'm gonna be using the touch screen a lot. Got some notifications down here. Smart lock, see what's new, app updates, play protect is turned on, location history, notifications are turned on. I can turn them off if I want. Night light turned on and off, make it easier to read in dim light so I can turn that on if I want. And you can see it makes it, whoa, makes it very, very yellow. We'll turn that on and off so you can see. 
Boy, that's loud. Internal display, you can see we went into the settings here. 1536 by 864 is the default, but you can take it up to be 1182 by 665, or as low as, that's very hard to read, but looks like 2194 by 1234. So again, that says looks like, not is. Probably leave it at this size just because. There's also orientation, so you could change the orientation of your screen. Presumably that's if you want to use it with an external monitor. All kinds of settings in there though. Hit the app drawer down here and see what we've got. So we've got a search bar, the a bunch of suggestions down here. Then I swipe up and there's apps. Probably a combination of Android apps and web apps. And I'm sure a lot of these are coming from being synced using my Google Chrome browser. So I've got things like Postman. I use that for work on occasion. But it comes with a lot of Google stuff here at the front. As you can see, the Play Store, Chrome, Gmail Docs, YouTube, Google Maps, why you'd use Maps on a Chromebook, I'm not sure, especially one that doesn't have LTE connectivity, but Play Services and whatnot, Chrome apps. There is a calculator, so hooray. <laughs> Netflix and Adobe Acrobat. So it only pulled in what looked like a couple of things. I mean, it's got Lose It on it. That's something that I've used for a long time, not successfully, but I did for a while. And then of course, just the browser. And the browser is the browser. There's also a tab here for special offers for Chromebooks. 50% off the app Inc. Credible Pro, Google One with 100 gigs of storage, the app Note Shelf on Us, get Duet Display. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and accept all of these. I've been getting these Google One 100 gig offers with phones for the last several years now. So I thoroughly take advantage of it. We'll go check out you. YouTube, see what it looks like and what it sounds like. So here is my channel, and actually here's the most recent video, the Pixel Hello, 4. Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a box in the mail. That ain't bad. Google. So the quality, let me go ahead and take it up to 4K. We'll see what it looks like and how it plays back. Even though, again, it's only a 1080p display, we'll just see how it does with it. Give me these gifts from Google, and this would appear to be the pick the next maybe talk a little bit about the specs. So the sound, sound quality seems to be pretty good. The viewing angles, not bad, not bad at all. The brightness, I mean, that's as bright as it goes and it's, it's acceptable. I don't traditionally take laptops outside. I might have to take this one out and just see how it does though. But it was playing back 4K, even though it's not a 4K display and not complaining about it. So that's great. And I figured I'd just go ahead and install a game that I've played before just a little bit. I've noticed that apps installing on these newer devices seem to be installing faster. Maybe it's something to do with the Play Store but there's the app. It's gonna be running in a, a window, it looks like. Let me hit the, yeah, the full screen button. It wants me to install the latest Google Play games. That's fine. Aha, if I rotate the display, it didn't do auto rotation, but I can set it to 90 or 270. Let's see how that works. Tap to start. Well, that definitely worked. And again, there's probably a better way to do that, but I just went into this display and I set, instead of standard, I went to 270. Because keep in mind, this does not rotate any farther back than this. You don't get a tablet, you get a laptop. This part doesn't come off or anything. So that's why the display is as thin as it is. So very early impressions. Things seem to be running very quickly. The one game that I've downloaded and played, it downloaded very quickly and it played smoothly. The audio, the sound quality coming out of the speakers is great. I have no initial complaints. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time spend some time with this inside and outside of the house, maybe take it with me to coffee shops, to work, wherever else. I like how minimal it is. I like how lightweight it is. And if it has all day battery life and can play YouTube for longer than several hours, I'm gonna be really happy with this thing. So thank you so much to Google for sending this out for me to take a look at. If you have any questions about it, leave them down in the comment section. I do my best to reply to as many comments as I can. I'll try to find links outside of Google, affiliate links just to help support the channel. If it ever shows up on Amazon or Best Buy or wherever else, I'll put affiliate links down there for those. And because unfortunately my camera overheated and stopped recording, this is the outro filmed on the 1080p front-facing camera of the Pixelbook Go. I do have a ring light here in front of me just to make things look a little bit better, but the frame rate seems to be a little low. For video chatting, for Google Hangouts type things, Google Meet, this will probably be just fine. But anyway, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up down below. Subscribe to receive all of my videos when they come out. Hit the notification bell if you want to get notified, and I'll see you again next time.